Welcome back to In the Shadow, guys. Shadow here with another tutorial today. I'll be going over how to set up FreeNAS to be used as a data store using iSCSI for your virtual host. So to begin, let's go ahead. We're going to actually get the IP address, enter it up top in your favorite browser, click enter, get up to the web GUI, and then after that, we're going to go ahead and type in root as our username, and then type in the password you set during your installation. Refer back to my previous video if you need to on how to install FreeNAS. Once we're logged in, you'll see the system information page. From there, we'll go off to the left, and we're going to click volume manager. This will bring up the volume manager. Once the volume manager is up, you'll see this is where we can actually see everything. If you notice, you can set the volume name, which I'm going to set to data store 01. Down below, you'll notice our available disk. I have four drives. I'm going to add all four, no drives are available, set them in mirror, and if you look below, you can click add extra devices and you can add other devices for cache and such, but I'm just going to go ahead and set up these four one terabyte drives in a mirror. I'm going to go down and go ahead and click add volume. Now it may take some time for the volume manager to go ahead and actually create the volume. But that's all right. Depending on the size and actually how you're setting up, whether it's striped, mirrored, or some of the other options, it may take longer. It also depends on the amount of RAM and CPU. Uh, FreeNAS is a big user of both RAM and CPU power. That's how it's able to get some of its you know, performance is actually from using CPU and RAM properly and actually using the RAM kind of as a cache. So we're going to go ahead and just let this run. It does take, like I was stating, and I'll state it again, some time. Oh look, there it goes, we're done. All right, so once it's done, that was pretty quick actually for 1.8 terabytes. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna look at the data store. We're gonna go up top. We're gonna to come on down, select our data store. Now, once you select your data store, you'll notice down at the bottom, there's some options. I'm gonna go over all these options down here. We can change the permissions. We can create a new snapshot. We can promote data set, destroy data set, edit options, create a data set, or the last one, which is one we'll be using, is create a Z volume. We wanna create a Z volume and we're gonna name it data store 01. I'm going to put for comments, data store for the host. And once that's done, we're going to have to do a size. I'm going to put it at 1,700 gigabytes, which puts us right below the 1,800 threshold. I like to leave a little bit just in case it's needed. I don't like taking up the full span of the LUN. So right here, you can actually change if you want ZFS du uh, duplication, deduplication, sorry. Dedupe is actually allowing the compression of files. It takes files that are or basically bytes or bits that look the same and actually compresses them and doesn't actually save them twice. It references that same bit if it needs to, if it's the same used across different files. So once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna head on over down to sharing. Now inside sharing, we've got block iSCSI. We're gonna go ahead and get to that. We're gonna kick on our target global configuration. And after that, we're gonna go to portal, click on add portal. We wanna name our portal. Oh. Actually, you know what, before we get started, I need to go up and actually set up the network interfaces. I have the NIC set up for internet, but I forgot to actually set up the interface for iSCSI. So we're gonna come over here actually. Let me show you the network summary. There's the IP we'll be using, there's BCE01. We're gonna come over here and actually add an interface, go to BC1, which is gonna be the other NIC, the one I haven't used. If you see in the background, you'll see BCE0. That's the one I'm currently using. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna get an IP address, I'm going to be using 10.254.254.52, which is actually the IP of the current uh, FreeNAS server. And the reason I do that is I like to use the last octate for iSCSI. It just makes it easier. So that way I'm like, oh, .52, that's the you know FreeNAS server. I know exactly what that is. I know what's going on with it. So let's head on back over to iSCSI. We're going to come back over. We're going to add the portal. Go up. We're going to call this portal iSCSI. Not even going to worry about discovery auth or authentication groups right now. Let's just get a basic iSCSI set up. So we're going to go ahead and click our portal IP address, which is going to select the interface that we just set up. So now if we go back over to sharing, we click block and iSCSI and we go in portals. You'll see there's our portal. There's the IP address and listening in the port that it'll be listening to. Next, we're going to go over to initiators. For here, we're going to authorize just all. Click OK. Leave it at default. Takes a little bit of time. Once that's done, we're going to head on over to authorize access for here. We're not going to be doing anything. I'm just going to leave it. I'm not worried about who's authorized. I want everybody. Now we're going to come over to targets. We're going to name our target. Target's going to be data store 01. And we're going to be naming it as an alias of data store 01. Portal group. We're going to be using that iSCSI group we said earlier. The initiator group. Same one we said earlier. Leave the auth modes and authentication group numbers as none. Click OK. After that, we're going to move on over to extents.
Just wanted to double check everything before moving on. All right, over onto extents. We're gonna name the extent data store 01. Use a device. We're gonna be using the device we set up earlier. There's the serial number for it. We're gonna put available percent threshold of about 5%. I, I wanted to notify me when there's only about 5% left because that's kind of scary. We're gonna put the LUN RPM of 7200 because I'm using 7200 RPM drives. Once you get all that set up, go ahead and click OK. Now we have our extent done. Now the last thing we need to do is associate a target. So this actually adds a target and tells it what extent to use. So we're gonna be using our target of data store one and be using the extent of data store one and giving it the LUN ID of zero. Click OK. Now that this is done, you'll now see we have associated targets. So if we go back to portals, we have our very initial portal which tells us our portal group ID and what we're listening to. Now last but not least, what we need to do is we need to go over here to the services. So off to the left, you'll see services. These are all the different services. If we go on up to the top, we click services. It'll actually load everything. You'll see they're all stopped. We actually have to start the iSCSI service before we can start sharing it. The other thing we want to do is tell it to start on boot. So that way anytime you reboot your FreeNAS server, you're not having to log in here and start the service every time. And your machines in are like, hold, hold on, I can't see it, I can't connect, what's going on? It's because the iSCSI service, trust me, I've been through that. Just tell it to start on boot, makes everything much easier. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lab.